think spring, this pretty much sums up late March, early April in Massachusetts. Yep, think spring, but we're just not quite gone yet. Hi everyone, it's Gable Stitcher back with a floss tube stitchy update. It's a little bit longer than I wanted it to be since an update just because I can't keep track if I go too long. I either need to take better notes or do more frequent videos. So um, we'll see what happens between this and the next video. If you are new, welcome. Thank you for um, clicking on this video to uh, see what it's all about. If you're returning, thank you very much. I am overwhelmed by the number of people who have been watching, subscribing, and liking my videos. Um, thank you for all your comments. I have been reading them. I try to go in to um, respond or at least give a heart every couple of days so that you know that I do see them. Um, I do read each and every one and thank you very much. I love hearing from everybody. I will be given probably a little bit of a life update after my stitch update just because life's been a little bit crazy and I feel like giving a life update. But some of you are just here for the stitching, which is fine because that's what this is, um, floss tube. So if you don't want to watch it, that's fine. I completely understand. But for those of you who are interested, I will give a little update after the stitching. So let's get into stitching. I had another finish. So in my whip parade, I was showing, um, I had 34 whips, I think, 37 somewhere in the 30s. Um, and I had two whips from pre-2000, so two last century whips. My last update video, I finished my oldest whip, which was from the mid-1980s. And since my last video, I finished my second oldest whip. And this whip is from, I think it was 1996, 1997. It was a Jeremiah Junction chart and um, it's done. So all that was left was a bunch of this third girl here. And this was a lot more stitching than I thought it was going to be. So um, yeah, so a lot of back stitch. I understand why cross stitch died in the 1980s now because everything in 90s, because everything was back stitch, back stitch, back stitch. So, um, it was where I got hung up on this in 1996, 1997, but I did finish it. Um, didn't fix the mistakes, just rolled with it, finished it. Like I said, a lot more stitching than I thought. Came out cute. I don't have a lot of margin. I was very frugal with my fabric back then. And um, the edges are probably gone because they're, they're scotch taped. So, I might try to finish this into a pillow, um, just a, a little stuffy. So I think that will, will probably work. Um, I signed this one like I signed my first one, my 1980s one. So with the year and my old initials and then this year and my married initials. So the Sampler, I was very happy I finished. It didn't take a lot of effort. This one took a lot of effort to finish. Um, a lot more stitching than I thought, like I said. But I guess I'm glad I finished it because if I didn't finish it, I would always feel like I should have finished it and it would have bothered me because I never got rid of it. So I must have wanted to finish it. So it's done. That brings me to four finishes for the year, um, which is exciting. I think I'm a little ways out from any more finishes. I do have a lot of um, projects that would be easy finishes, and I am tempted to knock a few of those out because I am really itching to start something new, but I don't wanna knock all the easy finishes out because 
I did that last year and then I was left with all of the things that had a lot to finish and it just did not motivate me to work on them. So I'm trying to spread out the easy finishes and the big projects that need a little work, which you'll see with the rest of my stitching that I did the past couple of weeks. So I did do a lot of stitching, um, but not on that many projects. I think that, well, this took me, this probably took close to a week um, to finish because I had a lot of the quilt left and the girl, girl and a lot of the back stitch. And this is solid stitching. Um, so I was still a little bit sick the last um, video. So that did take me quite a bit longer than I thought. I thought it would take a day or two, but it really took probably close to a week to finish. Um, just because I also wasn't stitching very much. Another thing I had worked on was the Satsuma Street, The 12 Days of Christmas. Um, this is available on Etsy um, as a download or also hard copies. Your LNS or 123 would have it. So they give two options. This wall version or also the option to make the ornaments. So I am doing the full version, which with my friend Lissa, and we are doing a um, stitch along. We're trying to do a block a month. I had fallen two blocks behind. So I should, we started in September. I should be finishing block seven this month, but I've been two blocks behind since October. And I finished block six. Um, I'm gonna say yesterday or the day before. And I started on block seven yesterday. And um, block seven is the swan, seven swans are swimming. So this is a fun project because the colors are very bright. I'm doing it with the call for DMC on 28 count Monaco. Um, I'm working on this in hand. I only work on this at home because um, I do want to try to keep it clean. I'm a little bit worried washing it with the bright reds on it. This does take longer than you would think because most of the blocks are really almost full coverage. So, um, and the ones that aren't full coverage have a lot of color changes. So I'm finding that I was counting stitches for this for the homework for School of Magical Stitches and Literature. And each block has the, the what was I just doing, the geese block, six geese laying has probably over 700, 800 stitches in it. So that's a lot, a lot of stitches. Um, that's probably closer to a thousand because I know I counted, I wanna say I counted over 500 for homework. I still have quite a bit of, it's over 600 for homework. And I still had quite a bit of the block left. So um, it's a fun stitch, but it's not a quick stitch. So I did finish the top banner this time. So the whole top third is done, which is nice. And one of the things I do, the tricks I do, this is probably really well known, but if not, when I'm doing a long row of stitches, like on a border, say sampler border sometimes too, I can't count. <laughs> I mean, I can count, but I lose track easily. So I only count to nine. I do half stitches and then I cross my 10th block. So I know that these are in blocks of 10. So you can see that's what I did with the bottom border of the block. And I also do it down the side too. You can see these blocks over on this side are all the half stitches with the one for the 10th 
because that way it's easy for me to check without gridding to make sure that I'm where I'm supposed to be so that I'm unlikely, I can make sure I get my block correct size and then I can also double check what's in the block as far as you know where I am against that tenth stitch so I can make sure that I'm off. That way if I make sure I'm not off. So if I'm off, I figure it out sooner rather than later. So I find it really cuts down the amount of frogging that I need to do. So I was hopeful I could get block seven done this month. I might not. That's fine. I mean there's still a few days left of this month. Um, the fact that I've started it makes me feel good because I feel like I'm starting to make up some time. So I'm scheduled to finish that in July if I stick with my block month schedule. July, no, August. But I want to try to finish it in July because I want to try to enter something in our fair. And the entries need to be in September. I think it's like September 1st to 10th is usually when you do the entries. And I think that might be a good one to do for one of the categories. So I'm going to try to finish it in July just so it gives me another couple of weeks for framing if I need it. So that's whip number one. Whip number two, speaking of frogging, put this one up next. So I've been working on the modern folk embroidery stitch along from 2018. A lot of people have stitched this or are stitching it. Um, Blitz Stitch, um, Caroline from Off the Grid, Needle Arts. Um, so you've probably seen it if you watch um, any amount of floss tube. I started it mid last year and I did not keep up with it. I actually only bought through May. I went back and bought a few more months. I initially started it the wrong way in the fabric. So I need to frog that. So I pulled it back out in hopes to try to um, finish March this March. So this is January, this is February, and then March is over here. And I've been trying to work on this in the mornings. Um, Vana started uh, coffee and crafting with Vana in the morning or Crofting and Craft Revolution, um, your name tagline on um, Instagram. So I will link her video for that below if you would like to join in with some coffee and crafting in the morning and some reflection time. So I've been working on this and I might need to pull something else out in the morning because this is 40 count um, Edinburgh linen and I love it. The problem is, is in the morning, my eyes are old. <laughs> and in the morning, they're not as flexible as they are later on in the day. So I find it harder to work on 40 count. So I was stitching this, I want to say Sunday morning, or maybe it was yesterday morning, Monday. And I'm like, this motif isn't lining up. What's going on? I was off like one stitch. So I had like the whole motif here. And it, I was going off of, this motif to go over and I post put it one stitch too close to that flower so I had to rip out you can still see it let me how it is here luckily I found it because there's a little teeny like flower like that on this side and it wasn't fitting I couldn't figure out why because it started going down to put the motif in so luckily I stopped because then the whole thing would have been off but so I needed to frog it and um, frog in 40 count red isn't fun, but so you can still see it there. But I stopped because I wanted to show something on my video. This is one of my favorite stitch tools. I'm not really a gadget person, but I love this. This is called Judy's Boo Boo Stick. So it has two little brushes on it. This one's like a clean mascara brush, it's pretty soft. This one's a little bit more bristly. You can kind of hear it. This is the best for frogging because 
especially if you're frogging over one or dark thread on a light fabric or off a 40 count, you end up with these fuzzies here. And then it's like, you know, the fabric doesn't look great. So you get this, you get the, I'm right handed, I'm totally doing this backwards for me. So you brush over the spot that you frogged. I'll do one area here. Lightly. I mean, you're not like, you're not brushing it like you're trying to get out every snarl and, uh, you know, your hair and you're angry. You're doing a light brush. Kind of like every direction. I kind of go up and down. A little bit of side to side. Okay. Very gently brush. But what it does is it gets all those little fibers that are stuck in the um, fabric out. And not only does it do that, but it also fluffs the fabric back up. So you know how when you frog, you have like the holes don't look the same. You have the holes are bigger, so you can tell the area that you frogged and that you didn't. Okay, so I did the big, the um, fat part. So you can already see it's looking better. There's less red there. And if you look on here, I don't know if you can focus, if you'll focus or let's see. You can see right at the end there. You can see the red fibers. That was in the fabric. And that came out. Now I'm gonna use the black side, which is like a very clean, like it's like a clean mascara brush. And that's gonna fluff up the fibers. I mean, you need, like I said, you kind of need to be gentle. You're not being super rough, but you need to give a little bit of pressure. I'll probably go back and do a little bit more. How much better is that? It's like much better. It was all red before. So like I said, I'm not a huge gadget person, but Judy's Boo Boo Brush, it is definitely a worthwhile tool. This in tweezers, little uh, sharp pointed needlework tweezers to pull some threads. Those are my two must haves. So, all right, so this is where I am. So, I think it's going to go, um, I'm going to use this as my travel piece, I think, for the next couple of weeks because there's only one color. I'm using 3802 DMC, and it's nice to only have one color so I can just put it on my needle and go. But I love this. If you are a fan of samplers and monochromatics, definitely check out Modern Folk Embroidery online because they really have some nice things so that was two um third thing i worked on is the 2019 linen um linen and threads oh the modern folk embroidery i don't think they say linen linen things no modern folk embroidery was the last one so definitely if you have not checked out their website, check them out because they have some really nice patterns. Next thing I worked on was 2019 Linen and Threads Peacock Garden Mystery Sampler. And this is a free stitch along. Um, so one part a month. January was the peacock. February was the gate, the garden. And March was this block. I, at the end of February, I hadn't even finished the peacock yet. The peacock's really big. Um, but I finished him calling him Percy. And I did him with Percy's in 3808. And this is over Monaco, Ivory Monaco, 28 count. But I'm doing it over one. 
So that's why it's um, kind of tiny. And my goal was to work my way up to that corner to do March. <laughs> and it worked everywhere but. <laughs> I started and I went like down and around and then up and now I'm working my way over. So March will go here. So I will be a little bit behind still because I don't think I'm gonna get March done, but I did a decent amount on the garden. And I needed to frog this. I put in about 100 stitches wrong. I was off one stitch. And I used my boo-boo stick. And if you stitch over, stitch over one, you know what frogging over one is like. Like you, you can't tell, this is ivory and I frogged the purple out, so. Um, yep, so this is Percy. So, I'd like to at least put the blocks in and give it a try. I'm interested to see how this block goes. One of my friends is doing this as well, my stitching friends, and she's doing it over one on 28 count. And she said March's block was tough to do because there's a lot of backstitch on it, and over one, sometimes um, backstitch will slip under. So we'll see how it goes. I'll give it a try. I figure you can always fudge it. I have actually never done a sal before like this year and all three pieces i showed you were sal's so like you never know what's going to happen with your with your stitching <laughs> you could not do something for you know all your life and then one day you're like i think i want to do some sal's i tend not to do i mean satsuma street 12 days of christmas isn't a real sal my friend and i are doing it Lisa and I are doing it as a sal. And modern folk embroidery, I waited until about five or six pieces were out to make sure I liked it before I did it. I like not to commit until I make sure I like the piece. The linen and threads one, this is the first time I've actually done a sal as it's come out. But because it's free, I figured it would be kind of fun and if I hated it, I lost my stitching time, but I would probably be able to make it work. So last project I worked on, talk about old projects. After I finished um, my quilt girls, which was my then oldest whip, I said, I need to pull up my, what's my oldest whip now? So that brought me to 2003. I did work on things between like 1997 and 2003. I either finished them all or I completely UFO'd them and got rid of them. Um, I had a lot of friends getting married at that time and having babies. So I think most of my stitching was wedding and baby samplers. 2003, I started, I went to a class and that's where I got the Constance Thayer sampler. It's a class with r, &R Reproductions. I don't have a picture of it, but if I do any editing, I'll put it in here. If not, it's a sampler. <laughs> it's a reproduction sampler. And I did show a picture of it on my whip parade. So prior to this video, I had had, on the whip parade, I had had the first two lines of text and I had had the border up to where the actual flower stops like right there. And I had, and this is big. This is, I want to say this is a fat half of fabric. So this is big. And when I was going through my whips um, last year, I was looking at the fabric and looking at the chart and I was like, oh, I started with the wrong direction on the fabric because the sample is longer than it is wide and I started it on the short side of the fabric. And as we know from this, it's something I've done before. Um, I tend not to cut fabric the wrong size, but more than once I have started something the wrong direction on the fabric or started it way too over to one side. So. I was so depressed when I found that out last year. I think last year I pulled it out and I worked on it. Like I put a few words in it and then I put it away because I was like, I cannot believe that 
I have this gorgeous piece of fabric, this class I went to, and I put it the wrong direction on the fabric. So after my whip parade, I measured, and I'm like, I think it'll fit. I really think it will fit. So I um, worked on this, pulled this out after I finished the girls, and I said, you know what? I am going to work the border all the way down to make sure I have enough room. And sure enough, I have more than three inches, well more than three inches here. And I made a working copy of my pattern at Staples because it's one of those old hand-drawn charts that it's a big piece of the paper. So when you fold it, you start to lose the, you know, what, what's in the pattern as a fold and it's not really workable. So I went and had them make copies of it and as I'm putting it back together, I see in my notes that the R and R ladies told us to start it in this direction because if we did, we would have a nice piece of fabric left over to do something else with. So if I went back and read what I wrote in 2003, I wouldn't have been stressed out about it, <laughs> but I didn't. So lesson to yourself to if you take notes, make sure you read them. So yep. That's where it is. And I loved working on this. This fabric is so nice. It's a 32 count. I have no idea what color it is other than it's an R&R. &R. It's mostly DMC. This um, this is done mostly in DMCs. The flowers are done in a wooks. It's really hard to see in this light. My light's horrible today. I'm filming at a time I don't normally film. And since we had the time change, like the light is all different in our house, my house too. But, so yep. Yeah. So that's Constance there. Look all over the place in this video. Okay. So I, I really would like to put a lot of work into Constance this year. I would love to finish her. I think that's kind of a tall order because it is a huge sampler, and when I got down to the fourth line of the writing, I was like, great, like I can finish this because the writing's over one. No, there's four more lines of text after that um, over one, and there is a huge house um, at the bottom, and I love stitching houses, but it's a really, really big house, and it's a hand-drawn chart, and there's a lot of quarter and three-quarter stitches in the roof line, um, so Realistically, I will be unlikely to finish this this year, but I would like to put a good amount of work into it. I'll probably finish the border and then start filling it in. Um, so to hopefully finish it next year. And I think I have four whips from 2003. So I'll work on this and I might pull out one of the other ones to work on. And I think that's what I'll do is I'll start rotating in some of my really old whips so that I can put some work into them and get them done, but not be overwhelmed and feel like I need to finish them. Because if they've been sitting in my stash in my whip pile for 16 years, like there isn't an emergency to get it done, but I would like to work on it. So that is all my whips. And that was a lot of talking. So plans, I want to, I'll probably end up working mostly on those same ones. I really want to finish the seventh block of the Satsuma Street in 12 days. I'm kind of in a groove with that. I was working on, I started block seven last night. So I'd like to work on that. And right now I'm really loving the linen and threads and the, Warrant folk embroidery. So I'll work on those. I likely am going to have a new start. I'm itching for a new start. This isn't the new start I'm itching for, but it's something I need to do. So this leads us into our next segment, haul. So I have a nephew who was born in October. And I haven't made a birth sampler yet, and I like to make something for my nieces and nephews. So 
I found one on Etsy that I liked, and I'm covering this up because privacy is is a custom. His date of birth and place of birth. So his name is Henry, and H is for Henry. I just really like this. This let me printer cut it off. The scroll work continues on the other side, and um, I like this because, um, as you know, from my girl samplers. I didn't do anything that was really little kid because I feel like you put so much work into birth samplers. I don't do them except for relatives, my children, and very, very close family friends. I want something that they can hang in their room or you can hang in your house as a parent for a long time. So um, this, I have the birth date, how to chart the birth date, and the place of birth below, but I really am thinking I might just do H's for Henry. Um, and it, I think it'll be just about square if I do that. I think that'll be nice. Colors, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I do like the green. I'll probably floss toss some of my Victorian mottos to see what I like. I'll probably do two contrasting colors. And um, yeah, so I might post floss tosses on Instagram. Feel free to weigh in with your opinion. You don't need to be kind. You can tell me that you don't like any of them and make recommendations. Um, I'll likely do it on a 36 count because I have some. Um, and I think it'll be a good size if I do that with Victoria Mono. And I'm thinking blue or green, and maybe with some brown in it. It's a, the, the orange heart, I might do brown. So this was from, so I'm gonna find out who it was from. The lady who I bought it from was great. Very easy to work with, it was Etsy. I don't see it on the sheet. I'll link her shop below because she was really good. And she had a sale. You bought three, you got 15% off. So, you know, you need to buy three. So this was actually on my like list anyways. London. I have a thing for like travel posters. I don't know why. And I like the ones that are kind of like the the style, is it art deco-y? So I bought that. And I also bought an S. I have a niece, Sydney, and I actually did not make her a birth sample. She was born really close to my kids. So it's very much like the Henry, only I just got an S. And I think I might make that for her. So that was my third one from my shop. So, and then while I was on Etsy, I went to Kathy Barrick's shop. And this is a retired pattern. Still up there, I was able to get it as a PDF. And it always helps. So. All right, and then one other one I got too. This was another retired one. These were like four dollars each. They were little bunnies, like the um, they're just smalls. It's cute. So if you're not interested in life update or haul, I'll see you next time because I have a um, few more patterns to show because market. And um, I bought a few things, um, but let me do that and then we'll do a quick life update. So I also, let me see, my market piece, one piece I'm waiting for, I had ordered it from a shop I haven't ordered for before at Etsy and she's waiting for it to come in. So hopefully it'll come in soon. I did buy, this is from Sassy Jacks, I bought this. Sarah, Sarah Stewart Hardman sampler. I love this. I think this was my favorite market release. And I actually have a sampler that's very similar. I think it's Ann Tyndall. So, but I have a thing for sheep. Is that it? So I, I had to get this. Love it. And we know my love affair with Quakers. Sassy Jacks had a... Ackworth sampler 
kind of designed just for them. And I've seen it lo a lot on Facebook on the sampler groups. And I'm always asking, what sampler is that? And they say, oh, it's a Sassy Jack sampler, the Bluebird Quaker. And they had an anniversary sale recently, and this was on sale. So no chart can, carry, can travel alone. So got those two charts. My other market release should be coming soon. So, and then I hit stash on load. This is going to be a very, like, odd chart because you're thinking this is, you just finished the 1980s and 1990s, Amy. Like, why are you doing this again? But I saw this on stash on load and I missed it by like five minutes. And the reason why I needed to get this is this right here. So Ipswich Hosiery. My parents moved to Ipswich, Massachusetts when I was in high school. And there was a stocking company there. And I want to say the 1800s, the early 1900s. And it was a big industry. And actually, if you go to the Smithsonian Museum of American History, on the ground floor of the museum, they have a house from Ipswich, Massachusetts. They, they moved the house to show like different, like what life was like in a mill town in um, that, you know, 1800s, 1900s and um, because of the stocking industry. And so this is an advertisement for Ipswich Hosiery and I have never seen that before. And I thought that would be really cool to make for my parents who live in Ipswich now. So um, I saw it on Stash and Load. It was somebody grabbed it before I did. And my guess is the person probably grabbed it for the Sunmade um, raisins. And I searched for it and I found a copy on Amazon. Um, so I was able to purchase it from there and very, very excited, very excited. So I also got this off of Stash on Load, the Winchester Mystery House. The woman who designed these recently retired, and I don't know if you can get the charts anymore, but I've been meaning to pick this one up, and it was, you know, it was the same price as if I had bought it from the, who was it, Debbie Patrick. So I picked that up because, you know, it was out of print things go. And I picked up, told you this was gonna be a big, big, uh, big segment. I picked up a few, once again, out of print charts. And I won't go through all of them. Shakespeare's Paddler. I bought these from Jen Stitch and Niche on Etsy. And um, these were all on clearance. They were all like four or five dollars, maybe eight. There's an antique spring sampler. Elizabeth Mary Gandry. And I really bought it for the this one here was the one that really caught my eye because it's so unusual. It's Eleanor Farrow, 1842. And it's like, there's a pagoda or something on there. Like, it's just, it's, you don't, you know, it's, it's different. So, so I really liked that. And I've been meaning to get this chart forever. This is another old one, the bird of a feather. You can still get these um, for regular prices. Sometimes they pop up on stash on load, like really high, but um, 123 still has them and other places still have them, but I've been meaning to pick this one up for a while. And I think 123 does not have it right now or didn't. And I love this because look at the, the witch. She's, it's actually a girl wearing a mask. I just think that is, that's adorable. And then if you spent $20 or $25, it was free shipping. So just like Amazon, you buy a $5 thing and it ends up costing you more. But like I said, I just, it, there was a bunch of the smalls, and I love this one too, Two Angry Birds. I think I spent $25 total. So Jen Stitch and Nick's niche, I know that she's Teresa's friend, and she has a Floss 2 channel as well, and she was great. I would definitely do business with her again. And my big purchase, this is my unicorn, or one of them. 
I had actually bought this before my last floss tube video, but it hadn't come in yet. So this has been an out of print chart for a very long time. Carmen of Copenhagen recently re-released it and nobody seems to know if it's back out there for good or if it's a limited re-release and it's only available as a kit. So I bought this from Trisha at Three Owl Threads. She had posted that she had a couple available and I jumped on it because I really have wanted to stitch this for the last many years. Um, the kicker is, is I don't want to use the material. It comes with a really nice piece of 32 count Belfast, but if I'm stitching something this big, and this is big, this is like 360 by 360, I do not want to be stitching it with two strands of thread. So I ordered a couple of pieces of 55 count Kingston linen to see what it's like. Um, I asked on the sampler groups on Facebook and people seem to really like stitching on 55. They think that the holes are, the Kingston, the holes are actually pretty big and it's no harder than stitching on 40 count. So I will look at it when it comes in. I ordered it from, I want to say traditional stitches in Canada, so it will take a little bit of time to get to me. But it should probably come this week. Um, if not, I'll probably do it on the 40 count. But if I do it on the 55 count Kingston, I can fit it on a back border. So, we'll see. Um, but remember, I was just saying that I can't work on 40 count in the morning because my eyes aren't flexible enough. I might need a new progressive prescription. <laughs> I really might. So, anyway. So I've never done a mania and I don't think mania is really for me because the thought of 15 more projects makes me nervous, but I might do a monogamania and I might start this if the fabric comes in and I can see it. So we'll see. That's what I'm thinking. So if you're stuck with me this long, that's all. If you don't want to hear a life update, see you next time. You want to hit a life update it's nothing terribly exciting but March is always it's a crazy crazy month so most parts of the country have spring break in March in Massachusetts and most of New England we don't we instead of getting one week off in March we get a week off in February and a week off in April which is why we don't get out our schools don't get out until like the third week of June which is really late so March is typically a month where as a kid you hate it in Massachusetts because there was no holidays. It is like full-fledged school. Um, but because it's full-fledged school, it's, it's crazy. So all three of my kids play instruments. I think we have had three concerts already. My oldest was in our, our state district concert. I actually brought this and I was working on this while we were waiting on it, waiting for it. Um, Cause you have to get there like an hour early to get a seat. So she was in that and that was like a two day affair. Um, we are a regional school system. So we have elementaries that feed into a regional and middle school and high school. And they did a big concert with all the elementary schools and all the middle and high school bands. So it was a lot of fun, but I have kids in both, I have kids in elementary school and high school bands. So that was another like big event for us. Um, a lot of fun and I'm really like, it was great. The kids loved it. They each band played one or two songs and then they all played Jurassic Park together. And um, I think the high school kids liked having the elementary kids play with them and the elementary kids were just tickled to play with high school kids. But there's a lot of kids. I mean, it was probably 500 kids. <laughs> and um, they did coordinate it really well, it was great. And my oldest played with her high school band. I had posted a picture on Instagram 
she played with a high school band at UMass Amherst um, this week, which was great. That was a great opportunity for her. So um, we went out there to see her and um, that was really nice. They opened up for one of their bands of music majors and they got to have a practice with them and talk with the kids and meet with the band director and he worked with them and get a tour of the campus. So that was great. And we have a concert tonight. <laughs> so she has um, her high school concert tonight. And um, she, our high school has two bands. She plays in one of them, but she was asked to play in the other band for the spring concerts um, in their competitions. So she's playing in both. And her main instrument's bassoon. But she also is doing their winter percussion group, which it's like marching band, but indoors and just percussion with no marching aspect of it. And they do competitions every weekend. So in practices three or four times a week. So she's been doing that too. So she loves music, which is great. I mean, it's, it's, I'm glad that she loves it. She's good at it. It's great, but it definitely keeps us busy. And we're also doing some work in our house. Um, my husband and I have been married for almost 19 years and we don't have a bedroom set. Our bedroom was furnished in what we call early college graduation. So finally, like all the kids have furniture. We have furniture in the main part of the house. We're in our forever house now. We moved here about four years ago. So we decided it's time for a bedroom set. And while we're at it, you know, like let's paint. And let's replace the carpet in that room too. So our house was built in 1989 and um, it, it has not really been touched since then, which is fine. But we have, it was state of the art in 1989. Like we have those big intercoms in every room in the wall. So while we're painting, let's take out the intercom that doesn't work and is an eyesore and um, let's fix that too. So everything cascades. So, you know, the closet, we put a closet organizer system in a couple of years ago, but we didn't fix the nail holes and it was like the, the, the walls were a mess. So let's paint that while we're doing it. So we had to empty out our entire closet, walk-in closet, and take all the organizer system off the wall. And my cross-stitch closet is in there, which is, it's a good size. And um, when the room was carpeted, I think they just, they didn't really carpet it. They put like a scrap down on there. So while we're carpeting the room, we might as well carpet that. That means that all my cross-stitch stuff needs to come out. And I have a lot of cross-stitch stuff. So take all the furniture out of the room. So it was, it was a lot. And so, you know, you get a fine room, put all that stuff. And we started slowly putting it back, but our furniture is not coming for another couple of weeks. And I'm sitting at the concert at UMass while my daughter's playing and my phone, I can hear it in my purse, just like buzzing. So I ignored it. In the intermission, I looked at it. It was my husband's stepmother saying, hey, we'll be there on Wednesday. <laughs> We're staying to Monday. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, <laughs> thanks for the notice, but we have no place to put them <laughs> because where they would normally sleep is the contents of our room and um, my car stitch closet because we're not moving stuff back in until we get the furniture. And I've been slowly bringing my cross stitch stuff back in, but I want to organize it while I can, while everything's out. So um, luckily, um, they're good with staying at a hotel. So, because we, we, we can't accommodate them right now. So, um, yeah. So they're coming tonight to go to the concert and um, it'll be great. It'll be good to see them. It will be very, very nice to see them. I'm happy to have them come. I just need a place for them to be able to sleep. And um, luckily we have a few hotels that are close by. So, 49 minutes. I might edit that last bit out because it was probably more than you needed to know. But thank you very much for watching.
and um, I will put some links down below. I don't think I'm really going to edit because I have company coming in about three hours and I'm not really ready for them. So either this will go up with minimal editing or um, it'll go up in a couple of days, but I'd rather get it up. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribe, subscribing and happy stitching. And I hope to see you in another week or two. Thanks guys. Bye.